MSNBC.com. A new site as smart as your phone. Fast and easy to use. It's the best place to get the latest news and videos. Your smartphone was made for MSNBC.com. It's time now to clear the air and to compound the tragedy of Trayvon Martin. It feels as though some people are now trying to do to him in death what George Zimmerman apparently did to him in life, attributing to this young man a character and a personality that they could not possibly know. And yet they persist in imposing upon his slight young frame an identity that implies criminality, juvenile delinquency, and the all-round characteristics of a troublemaker. This is not only deeply offensive to his family, but also a gross form of character assassination upon a child, a dead child. Stories are now being carefully fed to certain sections of the media. That Trayvon was suspended from school after his bag was found to contain marijuana residue. That he once wrote graffiti on school grounds. Wow! That he was part of a stolen jewellery investigation on school grounds that resulted in no charges. And, to top it all, the greatest act of social criminality for a kid of colour. That he may have worn gold teeth. Wow, call the police. Even if these petty incidents were true, what on earth do they have to do with the fact that George Zimmerman shot and killed him? But let's compare Trayvon Martin with the history of another man. Only this one committed some real offences and all of them after his 17th birthday. When this individual was 20, he was arrested for disorderly conduct after he got drunk and stole a Christmas wreath from a hotel. So that's drunk, disorderly and theft. Charges were later dropped. When he was 26, he took out his 16-year-old brother on an underage drinking spree. He lost control of his car, hitting a garbage can, but continued driving. When he was 30, he was arrested and found guilty of driving under the influence of alcohol. His driving license was suspended for two years, even though his friends tried to say that it was for just 30 days. Now, does this brief history make him a social wretch? A criminal with no regard for other road users, a drunk, a disgraceful influence upon young people, including his own 16-year-old brother? What do you call him? Scum of the earth? Hoodlum? Criminal? In fact, America ended up calling him the 43rd President of the United States, George W. Bush. But that's not what they're calling Trayvon Martin. Instead, the brief lifestyle of this young man is now on trial. There's now a full-scale character assassination, suggesting that Trayvon Martin deserved his fate, that he even provoked his own death. But while you may be tempted to divert your attention away from what really happened, here are the only three facts that really matter. First, a man with a gun chose to pursue an unarmed teenager who'd done nothing wrong. Second, the man with the gun chose to initiate a confrontation with the teenager after he was advised not to. Third, as a result of the confrontation, the man with the gun shot the teenager to death. And when you focus on the facts, it's not the colour of his teeth that keep coming back to haunt you, it's the colour of his skin.